Love Trump, City of the Duke Mayor, His Worship, Great Christie, to the podium. Thank you. President Gutal, Mayor Whaley, MLA and past City Mayor George Rogers, past City Mayor John Jackie, regional mayors and councillors, friends, thank you for joining us today. As John already said, we need to acknowledge the Chamber for once again hosting these important community updates. Jennifer Garys and her team are outstanding and a tremendous asset to this region. Please give them a hand. As was mentioned earlier, there are several of my fellow council members joining me today, and I would ask them to stand again and be recognized. I'm very proud of our dynamic team. We are all strong ambassadors for our community, unified and working hard to ensure this city continues on its road to success. Last year we saw a lot of movement in our city with a number of new project starts. Construction began on the new splash park. We began refurbishing the Alexander Outdoor Pool. We broke ground on the new West End Fire Hall and started building the new library. How many of you have now visited it since the doors opened on February 2nd? Raise your hands. Not bad, not bad. Now, if you had somebody at your table that has visited already, make sure you chat with them. But I want to tell you, you need to get there and see this new library. It is outstanding. You will not be disappointed when you go there. We also saw the successful completion of our annexation project. John's talked a lot about annexation. We, uh, in our process, we knew that the best thing to do was to have a growth plan first to decide where we should put things. Forget the borders, where should we put residential, where should we put commercial, where should we put industrial. Then we um, concluded an IDP, Intermunicipal Development Plan. It's a, it's a way that we would want to work with each other. So it's on an everyday basis that you work with each other, but it also kind of sets out the ground rules that if there is going to be an annexation in the future, this is sort of what is contemplated in that annexation, and, and it, it just smooths the way. We were able to annex eight quarter sections of land um, that became official on January 1st of 2014. Through that process, without any of the sort of stuff that's going on today with some of the annexations um, because we worked together and we were reasonable in what our request was and it just happened. Uh, there was not even an NGB board hearing with our annexation project. And of course with the help of our citizens we introduced the Duke's new strategic plan clearly outlining six goals to be achieved in the next five years and identifying the outcomes that will take us there. These accomplishments are the results of strong community leadership, demonstrated not just by city council or staff. The Duke is a success because of its people. Working as a team, we're able to take a vision and make it a reality. Leadership comes in many forms and sizes. Most people don't recognize themselves as leaders. That's why one of our initiatives is the Mayor's Youth recognition, leadership recognition luncheon, which celebrates 70 youth each year that are standing out in our community. Businesses, many of whom are in this room today, are leaders because you care about the community and show it through sponsorship and attendance at community events and projects. Citizens are leaders when they show up at open houses or community visioning exercises or volunteer on committees or boards. Our partners, like most school boards in the new county, just to name a couple, are leaders for their forward thinking and innovative approaches to challenges and opportunities in our region. Of course, we'll be celebrating the completions of our 2014 projects 
later this year. But the work doesn't end there. We work hard to provide a strong, sustainable quality of life for our citizens. Planning for our city's future, which is shaped by the decisions we make and the actions we take today. Some of these initiatives have been highlighted by John, and I'm not going to uh, go through a, a, a lot of detail on them because John did a great job on that. Um, but, but I'm just going to say that the governance review of the Duke County um, is an important initiative, and uh, actually the RFP for the co consultant team closes today. The Regional Emergency Services Collaboration Study in partnership with Ladue County. I can tell you with confidence that this will significantly reduce individual municipality costs while improving regional protection. And the Aerotropolis Viability Study and Joint Infrastructure Master Plan and Service Evaluation in partnership with Ladue County and the EIA. I don't know who comes up with these names, but it, uh, um, but it's the results that count. Cooperation, coordination, and financial efficiencies. I wish to highlight the one project that is a serious need for our community, the 65th Avenue Interchange. This is a crucial piece of infrastructure that will shape Leduc's future. City Council sees this as a significant priority. And for that, we need, may need to take bold steps to ensure our city is able to grow, be sustainable, and have the ability to attract new business. If provincial dollars are reduced or are no longer possible, we're investigating other avenues to solidify this goal, which includes pursuing federal funding through the Building Canada Initiative, working with area developers, and collaborating with Leduc County and the airport. For Leduc to be successful, we must inform our strategic direction by working with our citizens, being collaborative with our neighbors, and enhancing our smart planning and forward-minded approach with partnerships. As I mentioned, in Leduc, we are a community of leaders. We are a city and a region of people who recognize and put into action good communication skills and a positive attitude. Courage to speak up and listen. The ability to compromise to reach goals. A creative approach to collective successes. And a collaborative approach. Some of our <coughs> partnerships include municipal neighbors, many of whom are in the room today, both school boards, federal and provincial governments, the Capital Region Board, the Leduc Regional Chamber of Commerce, and the Leduc Miscu Economic Development Association. Working closely with our partners makes us a stronger city and region. I'm a guest lecturer at the University of Alberta for the Certificate in Municipal Management and Leadership Program, and came up with this matrix, which you see here now, um, that I think describes what is necessary for a successful relationship. I believe it all starts with having the right attitude. All partners in it for the same reason, to provide efficient, cost-effective services to our citizens. If you have the right attitude, you can build processes to create success. And if you have good processes, you can build trust. From trust, you can achieve open dialogue. And with open dialogue, you have a better attitude. It all comes full circle, and it begins with leadership. Setting a clear tone and having the right attitude to evoke positive change, in this case, for the whole region. Leadership, collaboration. I like to look at it all as we're partners in prosperity. Working together, working smarter, being the leaders we need to be for our citizens of today and tomorrow. To be fiscally responsible, not just when we're experiencing a downturn, but at all times. It means we must constantly seek creative ways to achieve greater efficiencies, be progressive, and always strive to improve the foundations we've built so we evolve with the times 
and not be left behind. Through partnerships, we can achieve common goals for our respective communities. For example, through the Alberta Government Regional Partnership Initiative, and John mentioned several ways that we've accessed uh, dollars. Thank you very much, George. Um, again, on top of the projects both John, <coughs> John and I mentioned already, we partnered with Fort Saskatchewan on a couple of projects, one being updating our land use bylaw, and secondly, creating the Duke's first financial sustainability plan. We've also partnered with the, the County of Wetaskiwin on a program for corporate performance planning and integrated management software to assist us in working smarter, not harder. On top of those, of course, we have a number of initiatives with our neighbor, Leduc County, such as Leduc Transit, which John again expanded on, and, and I can tell you it is a success story throughout the province. Not only is it show uh, planning together and working together through uh, the first intermunicipal transit service that uh, is a joint cost and revenue shared initiative between a city and a county, um, but also uh, work with affordable housing and numerous cost share agreements. John spoke earlier about Edmonton's annexation plans with Leduc County. And the city of, of Leduc will also be affected. We are actively engaged in this important issue and will strongly represent the interests of our businesses and residents. For us as a municipality, it is not a question of who we are supporting. It's about the best result for our own community and the region. We have a close relationship with Leduc County and have then entered into a number of service sharing and fiscal arrangements which are mutually beneficial. Although we recognize and understand the City of Edmonton's right to grow, we fully support a healthy, fiscally sustainable county. After going through our own annexation process with the county, we believe any annexation must account for the county's long-term viability. This region requires a collaborative process and provincial leadership to rationalize boundaries. For our own community, if we plan to grow in population to 40,000 by the end of the decade, 40,000, end of the decade, we must identify what steps are needed to get us there. We know that we must balance the services we're able to offer our citizens with the dollars that are available all the while bolstering Leduc as the location of choice for business and new residents. Today, we're a population of more than 28,500. Our residential growth included the addition of 637 new homes, which is significant when you compare it over a five-year stretch. Non-residential growth increased by 17% in permit values for 2014 to more than 132 million. Combine that with the county's 177 million that John mentioned earlier, and it means that almost $1 million a day was spent on new commercial and industrial development in our area. A million dollars a day. So, combining our residential and non-residential growth, 2014 marks our second highest year for building permits. With $324.5 million in permit values, we were less than $5 million under the record in 2007. Business licenses also took a jump in 2014, with a total of 2,076, up from last year's 1,870, which shows just how vibrant our city and region is. Collectively, information like this is very valuable, and it's a positive indicator of how desirable it is to locate here. Growth shouldn't happen for the sake of growth. It must happen, but it needs to be done responsibly. 
Growth allows us to maintain and enhance programs and services without significant tax increases. Industrial and commercial growth provides us with the best way to achieve that goal. So how do we encourage commercial and industrial growth in our city? Glad you asked. One of our first steps is through economic development, building on established practices, enhancing current relationships, and furthering a collaborative approach with our partners. We are very proud of and fully support Barbara McKenzie and her team at the Leduc Niscu EDA. As well, we have brought Luke Penton onto the city team and his wealth of economic development experience and enthusiasm is already paying dividends. I want to share with you our latest corporate video and once again, you are the first external audience to see it. Take it away. A business location is one of the most important decisions a business owner can make. As one of Canada's fastest growing cities, the city of Leduc understands these business considerations more than ever. With a vibrant and diverse population of over 28,500, we have expanded by more than 68% since 2006. Our growth has been a result of our convenient location and our connectivity, including our intermunicipal transit system. Located just 15 minutes from Edmonton, Alberta's capital city, minutes away from the Edmonton International Airport, and as a primary connector to the Canamex Trade Corridor, Leduc is connected to the wider world. We liked the location, uh, Highway 2, the proximity to the airport, the proximity to Edmonton. We do feel that the Duke as a city uh, is a complete community. Visitors and residents alike can enjoy a variety of shopping and dining choices in the Duke. We offer a regional retail center and a diverse downtown core which offers traditional street fronting and a selection of boutique shops. We love Leduc. Even though it's not a small community, it has that family feel to it. My original uh, purpose for moving here was to have children and raise them here, and I couldn't have made a better choice because they've had lots of opportunities, recreation as well as education. I could have lived anywhere. I've been a dealer for over 20 years. I've been offered stores everywhere in Canada, and I chose the Duke, and I've never found anything to rival it. I believe that what sets us apart from some communities is because we have vision and uh, to uh, create a path to get us to that future. We look for ways that we can encourage people in the community to be engaged, to be part of the community. And that's what's exciting about living in Leduc. We're dynamic and strategic with our growth. With our roots in energy-related technologies, we're continually growing investing in a diverse industrial economic base. Energy services, agri-foods, technology and advanced manufacturing are a few of our highly skilled productive workforces that have nearly tripled in size over the past five years. The city of Leduc is very, very business friendly. They have a very pragmatic council. They have very uh, far-thinking city manager and city officials. So they understand the business, how the business works and how it makes the whole economy work. The Chamber is a proactive voice for businesses. The Leduc Regional Chamber of Commerce currently has over 750 member businesses. We have anything from home-based businesses to Ledcor PCL, the large corporations, so we offer something for everyone. With more than 31,000 highly skilled trade and certified professional workers in the area, as well as access to a nearby labor pool of over 780,000, this is the ideal place to locate a business, not to mention Alberta's competitive tax structure.
Our residential communities offer new residents and businesses a variety of tempting locations to call home. There's a, a diverse uh, opportunity for housing here in Leduc. We have a good supply of condominium properties. There's different price ranges on that, so it can be entry level, but it can also be more of an upscale level. Uh, we've got some wonderful subdivisions in town with some excellent builders, so there's uh, great opportunities for people to build at all price ranges in the community as well, too. Community, business, and people. Growth is at the heart of everything we do. reevaluating projects to seek greater efficiencies and 
if need be, tightening our belts. We're just anticipating the impacts, but we're far from panicking. We're in a good position to weather this short-term pain. It is a reality that our community and region is closely tied to the oil and gas industry, and we will be affected, and to some extent, we already are, by low oil prices. But it's also a reality that we are a community that is so much more. We have the fastest growing major airport in Canada on our doorstep. We're surrounded by some of the best and most productive agricultural lands and industries such as dairy in Canada. We are recognized as the third largest manufacturing area in Canada. Not oil and gas, manufacturing. And I submit we have the best businesses and residents right here in this region. We are active, we are resilient, and we are engaged. We are a community and a region of leaders. We will hunker down if need be in the short term, but we will succeed in the long run through our actions and plans for a vibrant future. Thank you.